One of the most annoying things about FPV goggles is having to take the freaking antennas off when you put them away. Not only is it just a hassle, just annoying, to, but it actually wears on the SMA connectors. SMA connectors have a rated number of mating cycles, and it's not as many as you think. And taking the antennas off and on and off and on all day can wear them out, eventually hurt your reception. Even if you don't notice the difference, you could be getting worse reception from an old module with worn out SMA connectors or an old antenna. That's why the product that we're looking at today is so exciting. This is the MicroShield antenna from ORT, Old Time Radio Transmission. And it is a low profile patch antenna that you leave on your goggle and you can put them away without ever taking it off. And for those of you who are going, wait a minute, isn't this the same thing as the Aram Polar antenna that Joshua famously lambasted and then TBS got mad at him? And no, it's not the same. And I'm going to tell you why. The ORT MicroShield consists of two patch antennas that you stick to the front of your goggle using uh, VHB tape. It's included with it, just sticks on there. Uh, they're oriented at an angle to each other and at an up tilt. It's a little harder to show you, but they have a 10 degree up tilt angle. So as you drop your head a little bit, they're still pointing straight out ahead of you. Now the specs for these antennas are 6.5 dBi of gain and 120 degrees of beam width. And remember those specs, because we're going to come back to them later when we talk about the, the reasons why patch antennas are, they have an inherent deficiency. But one thing that patch antennas are really good for is being low profile and easy to manufacture in a very reliable way. So what is a patch antenna? A patch antenna is a printed circuit board. And if you think about it, Printed circuit boards are just wires printed onto a circuit board, and antennas are just wires bent into a certain specific shape. And the challenge with building an antenna, like this one here, for example, is an ORT helical antenna. They make all kinds of antennas. Um, and you can see that it's just a wire bent into a helical shape and being held very precisely in that shape by this, uh, I guess it's probably acrylic um, holder. The challenge with making antennas out of wire is that it's time consuming and labor consuming, laborious, laborious to build antennas out of wire very precisely. The length has to be right. The bends have to be right. It just takes a lot of time and there's a lot of room for error. With PCB based antennas, the technology already exists to print circuit boards very, very precisely. And so you know that when you get a patch antenna like this, that everything is exactly consistent from one to the other. So what's the downside? The downside of a patch antenna is that the dielectric constant of the circuit board means that patch antennas are inherently less efficient than other types of antennas, like for example, this one, or for example, this one. So this is a uh, Crosshair Extreme by Abby Crazy and I like this antenna. I don't want to cut it open. Let me find a different one. Well, here's just a regular crosshair, not a crosshair extreme. And I prefer the crosshair extreme, so I'm going to sacrifice the crosshair to this experiment, to the learning process. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Alex Grief. So here's the inside of the IB Crazy Crosshair Rev4. And what I want you to see is that there's this radiating element, which is in fact a printed circuit board. It is. And there is this, uh, I guess it's the grounding element. I'm actually not super versed in antenna design, but I did have it. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express lesson. No, I had a long conversation about this topic with Alex Grieve a little while back, and I'm, I'm mostly just sort of distilling down and repeating the things he said. And the key thing that makes the crosshair more efficient and superior to a patch-based design is that the crosshair is using this air gap as its dielectric. Whereas a patch antenna has radiating elements and a ground plane and they're right up next to each other and there's a dielectric in between them and it's the PCB itself. And because of the different propagation speed of the electrical signals in the PCB, they are less efficient. The Mac, Alex Grieve tells me that the maximum efficiency of a PCB based antenna or patch antenna is about 60%. Now, what does that mean for you as you know, just a user of the antenna? 
It means that this ORT micro shield has a gain of about 6.5 dBi and a beam width of about 120 degrees. And this, well, this is actually the crosshair extreme. This crosshair that I've torn open has a beam width of about 115 degrees, pretty close to the beam width of this, but it has a gain of 10 dBi. That's three and a half more dBi. In other words, with a higher efficiency antenna, it is more able to suck in the energy from the air and convert that energy into usable signal. And as a result, you get wider beam width for the same amount of gain or higher gain for the same amount of beam width. You just are getting more coverage, more range for free. Well, not for free. Because of course, as you can see, here we'll get the, this is the right hand polarized and it has a left hand polarized version as well. It's not for free because as you can see, the crosshair is a little thicker and a little less compact. And that's what you're getting with a PCB based antenna like the micro shield. It's very compact and, and small. And so it's a trade off. You can decide how you want to make that trade off. The other thing to keep in mind if you're going to stick this antenna on your goggles is that it is directional. It's designed to have, well, each individual patch is about 120 degrees and they're offset from each other by about 30 degrees so that together they give you about 180 degrees of coverage right in front of you. So if like, like most of the time when I find myself flying, I'm flying mostly in front of me, but at my house, I stand on my porch and I fly all around me. These, go these antennas would not be a good choice for a situation like where I'm flying at my house. You will get some coverage behind you, but much, much less coverage than if you're flying out in front. And if you decide to do that, you can just unscrew these things and put a different antenna on here if you so desire. That's certainly an option. Now I gave these antennas a spin at a tiny whoop race uh, just the other night, and I'm gonna show you some footage from that race. And you can all marvel at my, I won the race too. I won the race. <laughs> but you can all watch me fly. Uh, it, on the one hand, we weren't going super far. On the other hand, we were indoors. There was tons of Wi-Fi. There was tons of interference. And Tiny Whoops don't have massive, just 25 milliwatts. So uh, I was pretty impressed with the performance. This is not a rigorous teardown of the performance. I don't think we need that, though. We just know for a fact that a crosshair is going to be more efficient and this is going to give you a little bit less efficiency, but still give you pretty good performance. So I was pretty pleased with it, and I'd be happy to use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the last thing I need to do is tell you why this is not the same as the Aram Polar. But before I do that, I got to at least mention, ORT sent me a whole bunch of other antennas that they make, and I got to at least mention them. These are helical antennas. They're very efficient and have very, very good axial ratio. Uh, but personally, I don't like to put helical antennas on my goggles because they just hang out there in the middle of nowhere. Still, they look pretty well made. Here's a Pagoda. This is a very good performing antenna for goggles. Uh, if you need an Omni antenna on your goggles, I find Pagodas to be a little bit fragile, usually for use on quads, but they're great on goggles. And they even have some for the uh, uh, DJI goggles. These are designed for the DJI goggles. They look like they're right-hand polarized, so you would need the DJI antennas are left-hand polarized by default, but I guess you'd be putting some different antennas on your air unit too. Okay, so thank you for sending those RT. Uh, now, what about the Aram Polar? This, this has a similar benefit to the Aram Polar in that it sticks to the front of your goggles and you don't need to take it off to put the goggles away. But the similarities end at the form factor because the Aram Polar was designed as a MIMO antenna and Basically, it had one left-hand and one right-hand polarized element, and there's actually no point for doing that with FPV systems, with analog FPV systems. They're not MIMO systems. They're not using those varying uh, uh, left and right-hand polarizations to improve the signal. And in fact, even the designers of the Aram Polar ended up saying that they didn't actually understand the intended application for that antenna and that basically they acknowledged that the, that the MIMO antenna was not right for FPV. This is simply two patch antennas. Just two patch antennas put together in one form factor, both right hand or both left hand polarized, right? You get it whichever one you prefer. And, and so it's completely appropriate. This is what the Aram Polar thought it was trying to be just a really nice low profile patch antenna that fits on your goggles and you don't have to take it off. 
So that's going to do it for this video. These products are available. There's product links down in the video description if you want to check them out. And I'm going to put links to both the ORT antennas and the VAS antennas. I'm kind of torn because there's a purist in me that wants what I know to be an objectively better performing antenna, like the VAS Crosshair Extreme or the VAS Ion. These are objectively more efficient and better performing antennas. But then I went to the race and I didn't have to take anything off my goggles. I just whoop, stuck it in my, in, my, in my backpack and that was kind of cool too. And the coverage was decent and I don't know. So I'm not going to decide for you. You decide. Links in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.